A dig in Herschel is only beginning to scratch the surface of what the prairies were like before it was prairie here and who inhabited it. Once an ocean bed, 75 million years later, Saskatchewan is a bone bed for dinosaur fossils. And as Wendy Winiski explains, paleontologists never know what they'll unearth. In the west central portion of Saskatchewan near the hamlet of Herschel, a group about a dozen strong spend another hot summer day excavating. Oh, there is more. Yeah. Amazing. In a dry pasture of virgin prairie, they're removing the overburden by hand. It's an ever so delicate process as the crew attempts to finish the paleontology dig led by Dr. Emily Bamforth. Finish the site means that we are sure that there's the bone bed has been entirely excavated and that there's nothing left here. In 1990, the first partial skeleton of a short-necked plesiosaur was found here. The reptile became the type specimen of a new species called Dolly Chorinchops herschelensis. The name is derived from the hamlet of Herschel. The animal is estimated to be about 2.5 to 3 meters in length. The snout is long and thin with numerous teeth. Since that find, more than 5,000 specimens have been recovered. How many more there are depends on how extensive the bone bed is. So right now we're pushing the bone bed south. David Neufeld is the chair of the Ancient Echoes Interpretive Center in Herschel, where some site specimens are proudly on display. Assisting with the excavation, Neufeld made the day's big find. Within five minutes I had found these three, uh, these three uh, rib, uh, ribs here and then a little later, the fourth fourth one there. It's really important for us to, before we collect these, um, to map them. So to, to basically to draw a picture of where we find them. Because where we find them in the ground is often as important as what they are. The bones are that of a plesiosaurus. The sparkle remaining on the ribs is called gypsum, which is a type of sea salt, indicating that this entire area was once underwater. During the Cretaceous time period, 65 million years ago, dinosaurs such as the plesiosaur swam here in a massive ocean that stretched from the Arctic Circle to the Gulf of Mexico. In the middle of that ocean is where Saskatchewan is situated. What is different is that because Saskatchewan was in the middle of it, it would have been deeper than in Alberta and Manitoba. What we're really interested in seeing is if, because we're sort of in a deeper part of the ocean, if the kinds of animals that we find here are different than the kinds of animals we find in, in the shallower parts in Alberta and Manitoba, and in the south in the states as well. The site has piqued the interest of students from McGill University in Montreal. The field class made the three-day trip from East Central Canada to Herschel to help with the dig. They also spent time at a site in Saskatchewan Landing Provincial Park, 40 kilometers north of Swift Current. Sarah Popov is more than impressed. Originally from New Jersey, Popov didn't expect Saskatchewan to boast a range of 70 million years of history. So you have marine bone beds like this one. And then you also have terrestrial, so before and after the seaway flooded, you have dinosaur park formation in Saskatchewan, so you have all of those iconic dinosaurs. Uh, you find T-Rex here, you find Ceratopsians here, and duck-billed dinosaurs here. So the fossils we collect here go back to our the Royal Saskatchewan Museum Research Lab in East End, Saskatchewan. And from there, they're prepared. And once they're prepared, we can better identify them. And when we can identify them, they're catalogued, so they go into our collections, they each get their own number, and that way we have a, a really good record of them. So just like a book in a library, where you can go and look up a book in the library, you can look up a fossil in our collection. Ultimately, the goal is to study each sample and make replicas which are sent to other paleontologists for their own research. According to Neufeld, paleontologists are just beginning to unearth the treasures of the area. There's a third, third site that I found over on the other side of the creek over there at the, in the Bear Paw Formation Range, uh, a, uh, a third uh, uh, plesiosaur site. That one hasn't been excavated yet, just the, just the bones that were exposed by the, uh, by the erosion, the spring erosion. The Bear Paw Formation is exposed in the state of Montana, the Alberta Rockies, and here in Saskatchewan. About 1,500 years ago, Aboriginals also called the area home. 
Guided access tours of the history they left behind are available through the center. In a two-hour hike, uh, we can take you to a uh, birthing stone, a vision quest site, uh, a turtle effigy, uh, various other ceremonial circles, uh, three petroglyphs, uh, uh, a large uh, buffalo rubbing rock, and uh, uh, so it's it's a very very rich uh, Aboriginal history because the Virgin Prairie, the uh, sites have never been never been disturbed. Recognizing the significance of this, Newfeld jumped on the opportunity to open an interpretive center. The option presented itself 20 years ago. With the population of Herschel declining, the school was destined to close. As mayor of the hamlet at the time, Newfeld pitched the idea. The transfer of ownership was made for the cost of one dollar. Our mission statement is uh, to protect, promote and interpret the land its history, its people, and its assets. The Ancient Echoes Interpretive Centre is open seven days a week from mid-July until the end of August and year-round by appointment. Whether you're a history buff, have an interest in paleontology, or are just a regular Joe, those familiar with the site believe the lessons here are worth learning. I think it's important for us to understand understand the history, uh, not only our own personal history, but the history of the earth, uh, its beginnings and uh, how, it is, uh, how it has changed, how it has transformed uh, from, through all these different, uh, different stages. Paleontology in general um, can tell us an awful lot about life. Studying the past to gain a better understanding of the future. Why did the dinosaurs go extinct? For decades, scientists have been studying the answer to that question. But many are surprised at how much Saskatchewan scientists are contributing to the field. With only a small contingent of paleontologists here in the province, over the last 20 years, researchers have made some world-class discoveries. A good 60-65% of our fossil resources in the province are found in southwestern Saskatchewan. And if I could drive around an hour's drive around town, I could hit the last 75 million years of history. So from the, the age of dinosaurs to their, their mass extinction and the survivors that followed after that throughout the entire age of mammals. Easton has always been a mecca um, for fossils. Uh, since the 1900s, uh, paleontologists would often come from the east and worked their way to, to Alberta. That was their primary spot. But they did divert into Saskatchewan on and off. And they continued to do so for, for almost a century. And the Royal Saskatchewan Museum um, started participating in that endeavor back in the 1950s. Um, but it's really been uh, the past uh, uh, 30 years that we've really taken a more a very aggressive, active role in, in understanding these fossil resources. Up until that time, we knew there was uh, a rich history of, of, of fossils found here, but there really wasn't a big single icon to, to really hang the endeavor on until 1994, when I relocated the site and found that the, the, there was going to be a pro good portion of a T-Rex skeleton there, and that's when everything, all, all things changed. It looks very, very impressive because here we've got part of the jaw, here we've got part of the hip, we've got, we've got vertebrae, we've got teeth. It looks as though, even though this skeleton disarticulated to some extent, it looks as though most of it may, uh, may be here. When I realized that the, there's teeth still in the jaw of a T-Rex, you know, under my feet, um, you know, for about five minutes I just sort of lost it. I started chain smoking, I started walking and pacing. Uh, you know, the excitement that this would be the first skeleton of T-Rex in Saskatchewan. You can see that these teeth are sharp. A mouthful of these things for Tyrannosaurus rex would be like a mouthful of steak knives. <laughs> the realization that we had a skeleton, that's pretty much the parameters of it. Um, everything else sort of followed after, uh, followed after whether, we, you know, whether it could be used to create a museum and, and such. Um, that that all, all happened afterwards, and uh, the only thing I had control of is I'm going to be the one who's taking this thing out, and how am I going to do it? Be 
behind me is a full-size T-Rex, most one of the most massive individuals there is of that group. Um, and to see it here complete or uh, in a full skeleton is truly amazing. This looks like, look at the, the end on that. That's the same thing, right? Looks like it. We're realizing now that in Saskatchewan, we represent a more northern component of those time frames, and that there, it's actually not quite the same, that there's more of a, a, a provinciality, more of a, a, a uniqueness about the Saskatchewan fossils. And we've also made some significant discoveries. Uh, along with, uh, not too far from where the T-Rex skeleton came from, in a different deposit, we found a large coprolite, and that's fossilized feces, which is neither here nor there, but this one we knew exactly right at the beginning, in that moment we found it, that it came from a T-Rex. It had the texture of a coprolite, inside were bone fragments, which meant it came from a carnivore, and the only one that could have made that dropping, that size of dropping, was a T-Rex. You can actually tell a single story of life from the age of dinosaurs to the present day. We don't understand the complexity of extinction that's happening now. Um, and the fossil record may be a useful tool to uh, uh, appreciating the, 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 the sacredness of life we've discovered in Saskatchewan throughout the age of mammals to throughout some of the age of dinosaurs. So we've contributed a, a significant amount in terms of understanding life 65 to 75 million years in total. And we, each year, the, the, the thing that's exciting for us is that each year we may have a general idea of what we may find, but until you start walking the hills, you start going around the hills and buttes, until you uncover, wow, something's there.